Good morning. Today is Wednesday. It's January the 11th and the time right now in Singapore is 9.17 in the morning. And uh, after this recording, I'll be heading to the airport. I'm going to Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia for a visit. And uh, overnight on Wall Street, the market was basically in holding pattern. Uh, although there was a speech given by the Fed chairman uh, from uh, from Sweden. Yeah, he was, uh, he was, uh, he was in Sweden. Uh, last night and uh, he gave a speech and did not give us any surprise he basically maintained a slightly hawkish view in the sense that he's telling us that there will be no rate cut this year and uh, uh, interest rates likely to stay elevated for the remaining of this year so basically it is nothing new we already saw uh, we already know his basic stand uh, of course, there are market participants who believe otherwise and believe that at higher interest rates, uh, it will cause the U.S. economy to slip into recession and he may be forced to cut rates. So until that happens, uh, we will have to assume that he's speaking the truth and uh, he's telling us that interest rates are to stay high. So we will have to treat, uh, treat his comment as what it is right now. And the market is uh, not reacting very much last night. And of course, the main event for this week will be tomorrow's CPI uh, release. So that will be the highlight for the entire week. So we will have to see what the number is. If we still continue to see uh, easing back of this headline CPI numbers, then maybe uh, the idea that the Federal Reserve may have uh, maybe uh, in the position to actually slow down its rate hikes may gain credence. Okay, so until that happens, we will have to depend on what we can see from the price chart. Overnight on Wall Street, we can see the Dow Jones uh, did not challenge the Monday high, which is at 33,965, which is very, very close to just under 34,000. You can see that the market actually right now is at the midpoint from the high of 34,712 to the low point of 32,573. So this is a 61.2, uh, 61.8 uh, 61 kind of uh, uh, retracement levels okay so we can see that the market is having some kind of reaction here we will have to see what happens i think tonight will be more or less about the same i think the market will still be uh, drifting along waiting for the release of the cpi numbers tomorrow so no firework is expected tonight so on the other hand we can look at the s p 500 uh, is also moving very close to the 61.8 retracement level from 4100 to 37,061. No, no, no 3,761. So this is uh, like a midpoint. So usually when the market uh, have a retracement like what we are seeing right now, it usually will be kept at the 50%, if not at the 61.8% Fibonacci uh, 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 ratio level. So now the market is around these levels, so we will have to uh, keep an eye out for it. So if the market couldn't sustain, it will likely fall back down again and looking at the structure it does give us the idea that perhaps uh upside is pretty limited for now okay so uh we will have to treat this uh, rebound from last october uh, low of uh, 3491 uh to all the way to 4100 as a uh, as a corrective rebound so it is nothing more than a corrective rebound the underlying uh, bias is still to the downside in the daily time frame. Okay, so on the national itself, the retracement has been even shallower. So far, we can see that the Dow as well as the S and P five hundred uh, are, are testing the sixty one point eight percent retracement from the most recent high to low. But we can see the same thing is not necessarily the same uh, in the NASDAQ 100. Uh, the retracements only managed so far at a 38.2%. And if it cannot go beyond this level, I think the market is primed to test the downside. So uh, typically, if we can see the market re uh, only retrace less than 50%, it means that the market is inherently weak. Okay, So we will have to see what will happen upon the release of the CPI tomorrow. And uh, my guess is that it may be trading to the downside. But again, we will have to see what the market do. Okay, uh, Over in Hong Kong itself, we see that the market has actually stabilized. Uh, on the higher end, the market has not opened today, uh, not yet. So the high yesterday was 21,487, very, very close to the last June high of 22,449. So based on this, I think either the market hit the 22,118 first or it will go up and attempt to uh, test the 22,449. So by and large, you can say that this rebound from the October low of 14,597 uh, is basically seen as a three-wave rebound. Although this three-way rebound has been very, very steady so far, it may develop into something else. But for now, I, I can only treat this as a 
counter trend rally, which the main trend is still very, very bearish. Okay. Over in the Shanghai Composite Index, we are seeing that basically the same thing. We see uh, prices has gone up to 3,186, uh, which is on Monday itself. So far, it has not challenged this high any uh, yesterday, and uh, we do not know whether it will do so today. Okay, So again, this is a three-wave structure. So based on this structure, there is scope for the market to even go beyond the December high and even perhaps test the September high. And uh, for all I know, this thing has a little bit more room to go. Okay, And if the market take out the 33, uh, 08 levels on the market is, is primed to go even higher. So the fundamental is a little bit different from uh, from the United States. Okay, So the, the US equities and the Chinese equity market does not uh, necessarily uh, move in lockstep. Let's see the Nikkei 225. Nikkei 225 this morning have a breakout. The high traded so far is 26,467. This is uh, quite encouraging because the market has been quite depressed. But I can say that this market is developing possibly into a five-way structure. And if this is not the fifth-way structure, then market is testing this recent high at 26,630. Uh, this is exactly where the market high was on December 27. So uh, this is not crucial. Okay, it may it may actually exceed this level. But what I want to see is that uh, the market rebound from this level of 25,630 is basically a possible fifth wave rebound. Okay, so market is starting to come back down again and take out the 25,630 uh, over time. Okay, so I'm actually quite pessimistic looking at the structure in the Nikkei 225. This market is primed to trade lower in the near term. Okay, and uh, let's look at the currencies. The dollar yen continues to be a uh, uh, soft uh, of course yesterday we still see dollar maintaining a uh, somewhat uh, defensive posture we can see the dollar yen went up to 134.80 uh, 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 in the first week of january which is last week and since then the market have seen this uh, uh, rather relatively sharp drop and it has not been able to rebound so basically i think the market may challenge the low end to, to break the 129 half perhaps even lower, okay? So uh, the entire structure, since the market uh, took out 130.39 uh, at the beginning of the year itself, the market has turned decidedly bearish. So for dollar yen itself, it does look like from the daily time frame, this market is, is primed to go even lower. The market has turned into a, a, a bearish outlook, okay? So do watch out for continued weakness in the dollar, at least versus the yen, okay? Now, look, let's look at the sterling itself. Now, as the dollar retreats, of course, the other major currency is likely to gain in value because it's like a seesaw, right? Dollar goes down, the rest goes up. So sterling is a major currency. So as the dollar declines, the sterling managed to go up. And you can see that the dollar has actually gone up rather aggressively, broke a near-term support line. I know, a near-term resistance line. Now this line becomes a support. So as the market drift after hitting a high of 122.11, uh, on uh, Monday is uh, we can see that the market has been hesitant to go even higher. Now, if you notice, this is a rising channel. This is this blue blue area. Okay, uh, this is the mid price. See that the price uh, so far on Monday managed to go up to one twenty two eleven and then stuck there. Yes, top because this is with the mid point of this rising channel. So it does means that this channel here does place some kind of relevance, and the mid point is always. I think either as a support or a resistance. As the market goes up, it becomes a resistance. So market must actually climb above this midterm uh midpoint here and then stays up above. Okay, before the market can actually challenge the December high of 124.47. Okay. So basically the market basically, if you manage to slide back, hopefully it can hold its value uh on this blue line here called the uh, resistance and support. So this is technically how I think you should uh uh, uh pan out. Okay, uh, still maintaining a slightly bullish outlook for the currencies. That means to say that I'm conservatively uh, 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 bearish on the dollar in the near term. Okay, over in the euro versus the dollar, we also have a rising China. Uh, the, China uh, the, the, the midpoint of this rising channel has not been hit yet. The highest traded on Monday was 107.61. And it does look like it's, it is in holding pattern waiting for something to happen and uh i think it is more likely to trade to uh to try the upper end at 1.1 okay 1.1 means this is my target price uh at least in the near term over in the aussie we can see that aussie also remains very elevated uh although it is not in the rising channel very much like the uh, sterling or the euro versus the dollar the aussie itself is uh very high uh 
trading just under 70 cents and the market may be primed to go even higher my target in the near term is 71 cents okay uh let's go on to check out the dollar versus canadian uh it's one in, one currency that i'm always be interested to take a look so of course the dollar is on a back foot and um, very much like what we saw in dollar yen dollar CAC is also right now sliding and uh, it has traded to as low as 133 half so far and the market right now is having a little bit of a rebound but it does have a little bit of a negative uh, uh thing to it so likely to say that if the market ever retraced uh, look for opportunity to trade to the downside okay my target on the downside is 1.32 okay for dollar cap now let's take a look at crude oil uh overnight in crude oil we see prices manage uh to slide back after hitting uh rebound at 76 dollars and 72 cents now remember yesterday's i've been telling you guys that uh after taking profit uh just before it hit 81 dollars 50 cents uh i have actually gone back in the market to buy and I bought at $76 or thereabout and uh, the market went down lower to $72.45 and I was uh, looking for a rebound to actually exit my long position obviously I have entered too early so uh, good thing the market actually went up to my entry price and I exit those long position uh, with no harm done and the market slides back and yesterday it continued to slide back so in the near term uh this market may be in holding pattern okay and but the good thing is today is in january 11 which is in my mind based on cycle analysis there's a very high likelihood that today we may see a turning point uh in the energy prices uh, both for crude oil and natural gas so you will have to see whether this is exactly the case so i'll be looking uh, the crude oil prices like a hawk tonight as the market opens in new york i want to see if i can reposition my long position uh in crude oil because crude oil uh despite the uh, uh negative connotation uh china has op uh, reopened so that is technically bullish for energy prices uh there are analysts that says that with china reopening after lifting their COVID 19 uh, very strict protocol uh, they may actually add $15 per barrel to the crude oil prices. So we will have to see what kind of uh, uh, impact China reopening may have on energy. Because if one China should reopen, that means to say that uh, they would need more energy consumption, Okay, whether it's for the factory or whether it's for consumption, uh, 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 family consumption. So basically, at the point in time, uh, this could actually be bullish for crude oil prices. So do look out for potential turning point in the crude oil. Now over in gold itself, gold has been very elevated since trading to a high of $1,882 almost. You can see the market has been consolidating pattern. Now this level is already high, considering this is a seven month high because if you go back to June of last year, the high trader was $1,879.45. So the market has actually exceeded that level and right now it is not even falling. So I'm waiting for some kind of miracle to happen because I still very much like to go long on precious metals. But at this current price, this doesn't make sense to me because it's purely too high for me. And I'm hoping that market can come down and retest the support line here that you can see this blue uh, this blue gradient line here. So hopefully the market can come down and give me some decent price to anchor along. Okay? Uh, the same thing is happening in uh, silver. Silver did not manage to recover as much as gold as what we can see. But uh, by and large, uh, there is a possibility because these things looks like uh, this pullback from $24.55 uh, may unfold into a three wave. And if this is a three wave, then the $22.70 looks like a possibility. So if I can buy somewhere within this breakout of prices, it will be a much, much better entry. Although the market technically would have uh, broken uh, this rising channel pattern okay so that means the market could be if this pans out okay uh, it could be a new pattern altogether but still it is going to be a buy okay now over in uh, crypto we see a bit of a movement this morning uh, but market continues to want to go up no sorry this is not bitcoin bitcoin is this one. bitcoin managed to go up to 17,529 and 31 cent this morning and the price in which it is right now is, is actually in the midpoint you can see that the december high was 18,375 and the low was 16,285 so the price is actually between the 50 percent mark and the 61.8 percent mark typically this is this two these two fibonacci uh retracement uh, levels tends to be able to cap any kind of retracement so we will see whether this is the case this time if it does then it will be good for the downside okay uh, Ethereum continues to charge higher. Uh, this morning it had a marginal high at 
1347.50 which is still below the december high of 1351 uh so we will see whether this this double top here that's shaping up to looks like a double top uh if prices cannot sustain above uh, let's say 1351 then market comes back down then this could be a double top formation and this is a bearish development again we will have to see the market can break this near-term support here uh because this is a very steep gradient uh so normally it is not very very stable the one that is really stable is this other one which is 45 degrees so we will have to see how the market uh, reacts uh, near the 1351 uh, and see whether it can actually go significantly higher if not then i think the market will be uh, prime to to test the downside and ideally to break the support line and then to test the uh, more reliable 45 degree support line here okay uh, over at ripple we don't see much of activity the market has actually stored just under uh, 0 0.36 and the market is just hanging there for dear life and there's a possibility one or two things may happen there's the, there's this near term support line here if it's taken down to the to the downside then of course it will turn immediately bearish but uh the upside here is that if the market goes up it will have to contend with this resistance line here which goes all the way back uh to december last year uh, to november last year so we can see that this is a more reliable uh uh more significant levels okay but if the market can actually clear this uh resistance line here there's every scope the market can test the 0 0.39 cents to as high as 0 0.40 so this is the target zone and but this is my counter trend target okay this market is seen as a counter trend for now now uh, we want to see cardano cardano actually have a major spike this week we saw the price went up to 0 0.346 from a low of 0 0.238 okay so this is quite a significant move because this move this run up here is pretty aggressive and the pullback has been rather shallow so the only hope i can see is that market uh, develop into a three-wave pullback ideally to test the 50 percent mark which is at a 0 0.292 so that will be a, a much much more uh i would say decent level to anchor a long position because the way it goes up is pretty aggressive uh i'm not sure what was the reason the market went up but uh if the market can pull back the 50 percent mark and if we see a reversal signal happening along this line here then it may give me the incentive to actually attempt to try to buy this uh buy this token here okay uh solana also have a major spike up you can see that the low was just under eight dollars then up to a high of seventeen dollars and fifty cents so this is actually quite a significant move up and uh the sh the pullback so far is even shallower shallower than cardano so uh but it does look like that it may actually end up as a three wave to test the near-term support line here so uh a break below fifteen dollars and fifty eight cents is not a sell signal it's more likely to develop into potentially a buy signal depending on how the market reacts as it moves towards this support line here so this is a good token to consider buying because the structure does su support the idea that the market may have already bottomed up for now okay so we will have to see what happens going forward now this is all i have for you like i said after this recording i'm going to head for the airport i'm going to kuala lumpur for a few days to meet up with some people that i knew uh, that i met in hong kong uh they are basically to network and uh, until then tomorrow's update will definitely be from kuala lumpur and in the meantime do take care and uh, be safe bye bye